Hey guys, welcome back to the episode of the Jays Without Podcast. I am your host, Jaden, and today we're going to be recapping week two in the NFL. Um, a lot of good games to talk about, but mostly the Bengals and their, once again, heartbreaking close loss to the Kansas City Chiefs, their, their rival um, in the AFC. And we'll also discuss the New Orleans Saints and Minnesota Vikings as well. Two teams that are surprisingly starting out pretty well um, here in the opening of the 2024 season. So all that and more here on the show coming up, but make sure y'all hit that subscribe button. Check us out here on YouTube. Hit that, you know, like I said, that subscribe button, like, share, comment your thoughts. You know, did your team get the, get a win yesterday? My team is yet to play. They play tonight on Monday Night Football, uh, that being the Atlanta Falcons. So we'll see how they do tonight. Um, but yeah, so let, just let me know what you think there in the comment section below. And you can also find us on all audio platforms being Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all those things. Jay's Fifth Down, exclamation point, search us up. I'll, again, there's a link in the description of my last video, but I'll put one in this one as well, so you guys can go check it out for sure. Would greatly appreciate it. Um, also, drop a new book. It's called Attached. It is on Amazon below uh, in the description. I'll put the link, and uh, it's, all, it's available on Amazon.com for purchase. So if you're into thrillers and that those type of books, then I highly rec recommend you read it. Um, it, I had fun writing it, you know, and it was, uh, I thought it was done with, with writing books, but it turns out I wasn't. So we'll see what goes from there, right? Uh, make sure y'all check it out. So all that being said, you know, we'll, let's talk about the um, the Bengals first, because this is something that I've noticed, like, for the last couple of years now, and I don't know, like, what exactly caused it, but since I Bengals always usually start out the season, like, um, not good, you know. Um, I think this is the second straight year they started 0 2. And granted, that you know, now the first game they played the Patriots, and the, while the Patriots have improved, and while they look like you know, watching them like they, they, yeah, they've gotten better in certain spots, you know, players are playing better, their coaching is better. They still are the Patriots, they're a team that the Bengals should have fairly beat, um, you know, uh, convincingly, and they didn't, they lost, uh, and their offense just cannot get anything going whatsoever. So you turn around and you play against the Chiefs and the offense looks better in, in spots, you know, but still it's, it's there's still a lot missing that I've noticed, especially with the ground game. There is no there is there is a lack of a ground game. Zach Moss had like 30 something yards, I believe, total. And that was that's not going to cut it. You know, the best defense against Patrick Mahomes is to keep him on the sideline and, and to run that clock down and just eat time off the clock. Having a good run game, sustaining long drives so your defense can rest. And, you know, just as you your, your goal is you want to keep Patrick Mahomes on the sideline as much as possible in the football. Because when he's on the field, we know what he can do. We know what that offense can do. And that's just the, the, the name of the game, you know, when it comes to playing the Chiefs. You know, I feel like there's a team like that, like every, you know, couple of years where it's like you you need – or a quarterback, rather, in this particular instance, that you need to keep them off the field. Otherwise, you're going to tear your part. You know, it was uh, – for, for so many years, it was, uh, you know, Brady and, and Manning. Now it's Patrick Mahomes, you know, so who – and Aaron Rodgers was another one of those guys in his in – his, star green bay days but now we're at patrick Mahomes. it's like this guy you you know <laughs> like the only way you're gonna stop him is you you gotta you gotta keep him off the field and the Bengals were not able to really do that that much you know they're they're, they're they at some point have got to be able to establish some type of ground game otherwise it's going to be very hard to win um in in this year's nfl like for some reason i don't know i just feel like uh this year, I feel like there's going to be a lot more running of the football than years past. You know, it's, it kind of was that way, you know, uh, the first week or so. And, um, like, I read a statistic. It was saying that there was more runs than passes, like running, I think, running, rushing touchdowns and passing touchdowns um, in week one. And I believe that, for, you know, this – I believe that, you know, teams are going to start running football a lot more than they, they usually have been doing uh, this year. So – you know, in order to win these these close games, these big games against teams like the Chiefs and the Ravens, and you know, um, teams like that, your AFC juggernauts, the Bengals are going to have to able have to be able to run the football, um, and they just wasn't they weren't able to do it. And now everybody's talking about the the no, the PI call that happened on um you know the uh, who exactly the defender was um on the on for the Bengals, but you know, and look, 
Yeah. At the end of the day, it's like, yeah, you know, the Chiefs get a lot of calls that come their way, you know, and you, I'm sure you guys have your different opinions on it and whatnot, you know, whether it was actually PI or whether it was offensive interference, whatever you, the case may be. All I will say is this, uh, you know, at the end of the day, the, the Bengals should have won this game like, or like early when they were up. You know, they should have been able to run the football, you know, and punch it in the end zone or at least get three. Just keeping those long, sustaining drives on the field, keeping Patrick Holmes on the sideline. If they were able to do that, they would have walked out of, uh, you know, an arrowhead with a win. But they didn't. And, you know. So that's just the, the story at the end of the day. And then Jamar Chase had his issues at near the end of the game, yelling at Joe Burrow and the ref or whoever he was talking to and whatnot. And, you know, so and clearly he's having his own, you know, problems with the with the contract situation. So it's like the Bengals are just kind of in a little mess right now. If they need to figure it out, they won't go anywhere. So uh, I don't know what they gotta do. You got uh, pay Jamar Chase or um you know, whatever they gotta do, they gotta figure it out because right now their team is just not looking cohesive. Right at this moment, and you have to have a cohesive team in order to win in this football league in the NFL. So, uh, yeah, that being said, you know, Bengals fall to 0 oh, 2. We all know, and the Chiefs 2 0. Oh. So, uh, now moving forward on that note, we're, we're going to talk about the Vikings and their big win over San Francisco. Look, the 49ers guys, like, and it, like, they need, they need Christian McCaffrey. Like that's just, I think that's about as clear as day. That's about obvious as, as the sky being blue, grass being green. Like, you know, the 49ers need Christian McCaffrey bad. They need him bad because from what I saw, like now Jordan Mason ran has been, had, you know, playing well in his absence. You know, I'm not going to discredit Jordan Mason. He's a great back, you know, and he's, he's been doing a good job filling in. But what I will say is that uh, it's just their offense in did not look, like they can, you know, consistently move the football yesterday. Um, and the Vikings took advantage, you know, and they they played a great game. Sam Donald played a great game. Justin Jefferson had a huge 97-yard touchdown catch and run. And it's just eating up that Niners defense. So, um, I don't know, man. Like, San Francisco, they, uh, you know, they look a little suspect right now. And they got to – because if, if McCaffrey being out for these next couple, they're going to have to figure something out offensively. And George Kittle, I believe, left the game with an injury as well. Don't have exact updates on that right now at the moment. But I do know that they're going to have to figure out something uh, to get this offense back rolling to the way it usually is. And it's going to be hard without players like McCaffrey and or Kittle in the, uh, you know, in the lineup. But they're going to have to figure it out. You're going to have to find a way. Brock Purdy's going to have to play better than what he did. He's going to have to play better football, you know, and not turn the football over, you know. And because when you do that against good defenses and good, t and good teams, they, they will take advantage of those. They will capitalize off of those turnovers that you have presented to them. So that's what San Francisco's got to be better at. So, uh, but the Vikings, like I said, I mean, and, you know, eight rushing yards from Ty Chandler on the ground. I mean, they had a it looked good, like the, the Vikings look pretty decent. Yeah, I, wow, I cannot believe I'm saying that Sam Darnold actually played a good football game. However, let's not get it too ahead of ourselves because Sam Darnold has been known to do this in the past. He'll go to the team, you know, and play good for the first couple of weeks, and then he'll start, you know, you know, um, and, you know, implode and, you know, and turn into the Sam Donald that we all know, you know, and it happens to every team he goes on, you know, so I'm not going to get too excited for, you know, for this Vikings victory um, as far as everything like that, you know, I'm not going to get too excited off of what Sam Donald was doing, but um, he did play a good game. Justin Jefferson also left with a quad injury, but it's uh, from what I've been hearing, he should be fine and he'll be uh, suiting up next week as well. So uh, that's all expectations are leaning that way. Um, for the most part, but yeah, um, you know, like I said, uh, I, I, there are a few teams that are, yeah, surprising this, this year. Um, the Giants almost won yesterday too, believe it or not. Crazy, right? Um, you know, they actually were scoring points and looked like an actual offense in certain spots, you know, but the commanders end up just getting a win there and they didn't even score many touchdowns. They were kicking field goals. So just one of those weird games and, um, you know, League neighbors had this huge fourth down like drop, and he was like killing himself for it. Uh, but you know, I said, "Hey, man, it's like you know, 
that's not your fault. That you, that's not the game. Them losing games solely was not his fault. But shifting gears to Dallas and uh, New Orleans. Now this was the the Fox matchup that everybody was mostly watching. With um, you know, of course, Brady and Kevin Burkhardt on the call for that one. Um, the Saints went in there and whooped the Cowboys. Like they whooped them. Like at, like absolutely just a beat down. You know, they went in there to to um eight, uh, they. They went in there to AT and T Stadium and they just hushed that crowd up. You know, Dallas cannot get anything going really that much consistently on the offense end. Um, had a few plays with CD Lamb here and there, but overall, that Prescott did not look that good um, as usual. Um, you know, in, in games where he should be looking good, um, but anyway, and uh, you know. This Cowboys defensively, man, just got gashed. Like the, the Saints run the ball down the throat, and Clint Kubiak was dialing up those big plays, pushing the ball down the field, and Dallas had no answer for it. You know, and it's, it's funny because, like, the Saints, like, look, I'm a Falcons fan. You know, I can't stand the Orleans, of course. But while I can, you know, give credit where it's due. And the Saints have speed, man. They got speed. They got guys that can get down the field, and they got guys that, you know, uh, have, are, are good at tracking down the football. And so, my question was like, where, why wasn't the previous offense coordinator Pete Carmichael doing this? Well, Clint Kubiak gets here in his first year, like they score over what ninety something points through the first two weeks of the season, which has not happened since the two thousand nine season for New Orleans, where they went to the Super Bowl and won. So, that being said, like Kubiak had made an effort, like, hey, look, we got guys that can get down the field, we're going to get them the ball, you know, like that's it's no question. We got Alvin Kamara who is who who is able to. Uh, run the ball, but also it's great uh, catching out the backfield. Like, you know, let's push him down the field. Man. Let's let's get the ball in our playmakers' hands in creative ways, and not ways that are just mundane, that are flat, that are nonsensical. Um, you know, and it boded well for them. They scored for what forty-one points against a supposed formidable Dallas defense. And last time this happened to the Cowboys was in the playoffs just a few months ago against Green Bay. Once again, a team comes in there that was supposed to be lesser of a, a, a that was on paper was supposed to be a lesser lesser team of them, and they and that that came in there and just like absolutely dominated man and played four quarters of really good football, and gotta give credit where it's due. You know, like I said, I don't like the Saints, but at the end of the day, I'm a football analyst. I can't always have my bias play into th this role. Like I have to also look at it from an objective point of view and look at it from an objective point of view. The New Orleans Saints just have a good football team this year. Now, it's only week two, week two just passed, so it's like it's still early. But the way they're looking right now, man, you know, who knows what's to happen. But that's just the kind of the leave it right there for the moment. But like I said, you know, uh, Dallas has got to figure out defensively what they're going to do. You know, Mike Zimmer and, and crew, they're going to have to figure out um, – how to not give up over 200 something yards in one half of football because that's what they did to the Saints and for New Orleans, you know, keep back, uh, uh, capitalize off of that, build off of that win for them. So it's going to be very interesting NFC South moving forward this year. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers also won their matchup against Detroit 20 to 16. So it wasn't a pretty game, but you know, they got the win. So Falcons play tonight on Monday Night Football against the Eagles. They're going to have to get this win here. Uh, it's going to be tough going up there to the league and, and, playing a very talented offense with Jalen Hurts and Devontae Smith and Dallas Goddard and Saquon Barkley. However, A.J. Brown has been ruled out of this matchup, so he will not be tuning up for the Eagles tonight. So that's one less guy the Falcons got to deal with, but overall, they're going to have to figure out a way to get Kirk Cousins, you know, on the roll and get him moving, get the ball, the offense to quit looking stagnant, you know, up to line, you know, tackles going to have to play better. Mickey Aries going to have to play better. They're going to have to um, hold up and they're going to have to be able to get the ball in their playmakers hands in a consistent manner. So defensively, I'm not worried about them. It's just offensively. I need, I need to see that Kirk Cousins is, is, you know, capable of playing football right now, but you know, we'll see what happens tonight. Y'all can catch that game on ESPN, 815 kickoff. Um, and like I said, stay tuned. Thank you for uh, watching today. And you can find us uh, again here on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button, guys. Hit the subscribe button. It's in the right corner of your screen. Like, hit it right now. Um, please. <laughs> but, yeah, no, really, hit the subscribe button. Check us out on uh, all audio platforms and Spotify, Apple Podcasts. I'll put the link below in the description as well as the link to my new book, Attached, which is available for purchase on Amazon. Make sure you guys check it out. I really appreciate the help and support there. And um, we'll see you next time on Jason.